Um, I want to um, introduce Liz, but I also want um, everyone to know like that Liz is, has this huge heart and she's like one of my best friends and she's a nurse and an advocate and really just someone who really cares about people in the community. So please welcome Liz. Thank you, Mel. Hi, everybody. I hope you have been enjoying listening to what these beautiful people have come out to share with us today. I'm one of the hosts, as most of you guys know, Liz, and a lot of you probably recognize me more as Alika Pika Malia on Facebook, which is my Hawaiian name. Some who have come out to the events I have been at or the marches know who I am and what I'm about, but for those who don't, I'm a human being, firstly. I am a person of color. I am a nurse, and I am proud to be a woman. My father is of Hawaiian, Puerto Rican, Cuban, and Portuguese descent, and my mother was of Irish descent. Today, though, is about my heritage, but it is more specifically about being a woman. Women are told so many times throughout their lifetime to be quiet, whether it is through direct messages or subliminally. It's funny that we are still here in 2020 dealing with racism and also dealing with women being told to shut up or your opinion doesn't matter. I come from a very, very, very strong line of women. My mother and my grandmother, for two of them, were some of the strongest women I have ever known. They instilled in me part of who I am today and showed me that no matter what era you were born in, it is mandatory that women speak up. My grandmother was born in 1918. She was far from someone who was quiet and was never told where to go because if you told her that, you had another thing coming for you. <laughs> but in a very peaceful matter of a fact way, and the same went for my mom. They too were both nurses and both women who stood up for everyone and everything that was right. My tutu, which is my grandmother in Hawaii, she was also one of the strongest women I had ever came to know. She is no longer here either. She too was born in the early 20th century. She was a feisty, hard-headed, strong and loving woman. She raised my dad and all his siblings on her own and no one could tell her anything, especially when she was right also. These three women instilled in me my voice and my dad. Although a man, he had to raise me by himself when I turned 12, the year that my mother died. This was 20 years ago. My dad was a very tough man, old school. He had me in later in life. He is now 73 which made him 40 when I was born. To live with an older parent, you learn differently about the world around you. To live, oh, sorry, you grow up differently. However, with my dad's upbringing, he always knew that a woman was smarter. He tells me this every day. He tells me a woman needs to be the one to make the change in this world because we handle circumstance differently. My dad, for the past 20 years, has been my dad and my mom, and I couldn't be more thankful for him. As a woman who had to be raised for most of her life by a man, I may present to you differently. I may present to the world differently than your typical woman, or so far as Americans see. I am smart, but I am humble. I am rough around the edges, but I am kind. I am well-rounded in sports, but I dance. I see what goes on in the streets, but I am very book smart as well. Growing up as a tomboy, I played every sport under the sun. It's just who I was. But I also took tap dance and ballet. I hated makeup. And no offense to the women that wear it now, I still hate it. <laughs> on very rare occasions will you ever see me wear it, mostly because I don't know how to. So if anyone out here has pointers on that, I'm willing to take them. But anyway, onto this event, onto this cause, this movement. As women, we have been silenced for too long. 
I too have been told to be quiet in many different forms, whether it be from abuse from a man who couldn't handle a strong woman, or through being fired at a job because I merely spoke the honest truth of a man who was sexually abusing coworkers and being ill-mannered to patients. And through police officers too, not being able to handle speaking to a strong person of color woman. <sighs> I could speak for hours on all of those topics, but there's not enough time in the day, nor enough time in this event that could be substantial enough. So instead, I use my experiences daily to help women in every way that I can. I always have. It's been it's difficult being a woman. So many women put one another down because society sees us a certain way. And that needs to stop. Stop being afraid to compliment one another. We are queens and we are unstoppable. Those who cannot come to this realization are weak within themselves. <laughs> women rule this planet. And I have learned in my 32 years of life as a woman to not be silent. People who truly know me know I, have not, know I have not always been this outspoken, but this comes with age, experience, and drive. If there is one thing I would tell the youth, it would be to use your voice and always trust your intuition because it is always right. That is the one thing I wish I could have told my younger self, to always trust my intuition. There was never a day where it was wrong. Please find your voice and use it. We are in a time where a woman's voice needs to be heard. It's not an option anymore. We have our rights, but we still have some drawback when it comes to equality, still in some places. Some places prefer men to speak. Some workplaces will still pay a man more for the same job that is being done. And some places still refer to you as lesser than a man. And as somebody that has traveled the United States and the world, I have seen different cultures and how their women interact in the world as well. And America still has a long way to go. The number of times I have been told what to do is sickening in this day and age. It's what kept me quiet as a child and as a teenager and into my early 20s. But that does not hold true anymore. Like I said earlier, I have been put down by men in many ways, yet I am still resilient and strong. <laughs> I am not ashamed to speak on this either. A lot of men, more so to those who can agree with this man that is in office, will show you their way of how a real man should be grabbing her by the pussy and how a woman should react to this man by just accepting it. That will be the day with me. My dad always tells people, don't ever tell Elizabeth to shut up because you won't hear the end of it. And it's true. <laughs> I have a voice and as long as I am alive and in the right, it will be used and I will be the first to give you the truth from all sides of a situation. So in closing, I give you peace and aloha to everyone here and those around the world. Believe in yourselves and for us women, we need to believe in one another. We need to begin to lean on one another instead of being so judgmental. This life is so short, as you all that are here know. Everyone needs to lift one another up. And for my women, be each other's crutches when you need to be. There is no shame in needing help. That's what independent women fail to realize when there are times that we too do need help. I too have had to learn this over the years. Lean on your sisters and rise each other up. Bring your men up too and have deep conversations with them. We birth men, we endure the, but we endure mental pain that men couldn't even begin to imagine because we hold theirs too. Enlighten the world and spread the love that you only know how to give because the world needs a whole lot of that right now. Women are beautiful, breathtaking, and awe-inspiring. The world is harsh and cruel, but don't ever let it take your heart and determination from you. Aloha.